fillies and gentle colts. Welcome to another episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Science. Please give a warm welcome to our host, Brony Mock. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be back, folks. Yo, 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 today I'll be dropping that mad equestrian science. No, literally dropping that equestrian science because today we're going to be discussing gravity. That's right, in this episode, we're going to be calculating g, the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the equestrian planet. Then, by making a few key assumptions, we will also be able to calculate the mass and size of Equestria. So hang on tight, kiddos. This is going to be one hell of a ride. Alrighty, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is calculate g, the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the equestrian planets. On Earth, g is about 16 feet per second squared. Now this number shows up in Newton's equations of kinematics governing motion. In particular, g is very useful in calculating projectile motion. Specifically, we will use the equation y of t is equal to y naught plus v naught t plus one half minus minus one half g t squared. This equation calculates the height of an object at any particular point in time given its initial height, its initial upward or downward velocity, t, or the time, and of course, g. Now we can use the same equation to calculate g on the surface of the equestrian planet. But first, we have to make a key assumption. Assumption number one. Newtonian physics still apply in equestrian. Now, this assumption might seem a little obvious or mundane, but if you've ever seen Pinkie Pie in action, you know this assumption is quite necessary. So we can take this equation and apply it to situations in equestria. If for those situations we can find the values of y of t, y naught, v naught, and t, we can then calculate the value of G. Are you ready? Here we go! Well, calculating G from an example in Equestria um, will actually yield very different values of G depending on which situation you choose. For example, using this scene in Apple Buck season yields a G of about 36,000 feet per second squared. Using this scene from Feeling Peaky Keen yields a G of 156. Using that same scene but the second bounce yields a G of about 56. Using this scene from the Mysterious Mirror Do Well yields a G of only 2.24. Just for argument's sake, we will be using this value of G, so the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the equestrian planet is 56 feet per second squared. So now that we have g is equal to 56 feet per second squared, or in SI units, 34.3 meters per second squared, uh, how do we get to the mass and size of the equestrian planet? Well, we can start with uh, looking at how we find the force exerted by gravity on the surface of the equestrian planet. Now let's say we have an object on Equestria with mass equal to just m. Using Newton's second law, which is force equal to 
mass times acceleration and calculates the force exerted on this object. You can simply say force then is equal to mass times g because g is the acceleration on the surface and we just get well mg. Now we can use this method to calculate the force but another method we can use is Newton's law of universal gravitation which goes as follows. So the force of gravity is equal to some gravitational constant g times the product of the masses of the two objects. In this case, this mass, this object of mass m, and the surf and the equestrian planet, divided by the separation between the center of masses. So, if we then just plug in some values, you see that force of gravity is equal to g times the mass of the cluster m times the mass of the object over the radius of the cluster m squared. Now this is also the force of gravity on this object, so we can set this equal to mg. And canceling some stuff out, we finally get g is equal to mg times the mass of the equestria over the radius of the equestria squared. Right, unfortunately, this equation has two unknowns, so we can't solve it by itself. However, if we make another key assumption, we can find the values of both the mass of Equestria and the radius of Equestria. Assumption number two. The average density of the Equestrian planet is equal to the average density of Earth. Now, since Equestria is a life harboring planet, I believe that this assumption probably does not deviate that far from the truth. Now, this will, assumption uh, will allow us to draw a relationship between the mass and volume of Equestria and the mass and volume of Earth, allowing us to solve that previously unsolvable equation. So, then, what is the density of the Earth? Well, to calculate density, we simply take the mass over the volume of the Earth. Now, we plug in some values here. We get that the density of the Earth is approximately 5,500 kilograms meter cubed. Now, this might seem bit high because if you've ever seen dirt it certainly is not 5,500 kilograms per meter cubed but you also have to remember that the core of the earth is actually very dense and causes the average density of the earth to be very high. Now if we set this number to the density of the equestrian planet we can then calculate its mass and its volume. Now that we've got two equations with two unknowns, we can go ahead and just solve for the mass and the radius of Equestria. If we calculate that out, we get that Equestria has... We have a mass of 2.57 times 10 to the 26th kilogram and a radius of about 22,334 kilometers. And one more thing before I go on, I accidentally made a mistake right here. It should be times 10 to the 24th. Alright, so now we have the mass of Equestria and the radius of Equestria. Now compared to the size of the Earth, the radius of 60 or 6,378 kilometers, Equestria is pretty big. Equestria, which is about the size of Neptune in our solar system, has a radius of almost over three times that of the Earth, meaning that the surface area is nine times that of the Earth. Yet, most of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, takes place on less than 0.000001% of the surface area. 
which kind of makes you wonder how come we never get to see the other 99.999999% oh, oh well now the mass of Equestria is about 257 trillion trillion kilograms. That's a lot of zeros. It's 24 to be exact. Now this is equal to 43 times the mass of the Earth, 7th of the mass of Jupiter, and about the mass of your mother. However, before we conclude our calculations, we have to make one final assumption. Assumption number three. Fluttershy's best pony. Now this assumption might seem unrelated to what we've done today, but this core assumption is vital to all of equestrian science. In fact, if we did not assume that Fluttershy was best pony, we wouldn't be able to calculate anything at all. All of our theories would just go flying out the window because nothing can be calculated unless we assume that Fluttershy is best pony. So, in summary, starting from just a couple of values from the Earth, right here, applying these assumptions using a couple equations from Newton's laws, we were able to derive G on Equestria, the mass of Equestria, and the radius of the Equestria planet. But be warned, these values um, are entirely dependent on the example situation I chose, the scene from Feeling Pinky Keen. Um, so these values don't hold all the time. And depending on the example you guys choose, you can get entirely different values of G, mass of Equestria, and the radius of Equestria. Well, that's it for today's show. Tune in next time, where we calculate the orbital period of Equestria and its moon. If you guys also have any questions about Equestrian science that you would like answered, be sure to message us, and we will put them on the show. I'm Brony Mock, and this is the only Brony shirt I own. Peace out. Friendship is science.